special. It's a great tradition that rugby's got. Martin Johnson has led the Lions to a victory. I can't take my eyes off of you. It's kind of the pinnacle of, of playing uh, international rugby. Brian O'Driscoll! Oh, you beauty! And so Brian O'Driscoll leads the Lions to New Zealand, a place where only John Dawes' squad of 71 have emerged victorious. In New Zealand, every game is hard. The Lions have a huge challenge ahead of them. But it's a hell of a place to tour, very, very tough. There will be no tour like this one. It's a tough place to win. If they smell a weakness in your side, then they will rip you apart. Eleven games, every one of them tough. The Lions will travel the length and breadth of New Zealand from Auckland in the north to Invercargill, just over 100 miles south of Dunedin. But we start in Rotorua, in the middle of the North Island, for the first game on tour against Bay of Plenty. What we've all been waiting for since the squad was announced almost two months ago, the first match on New Zealand soil for the 2005 Lions. They get things underway against last year's MPC semi-finalists at the International Stadium. Well, the advanced party of Lions fans have arrived for the full duration of the tour, the hardcore, arguably the most committed group of supporters in rugby. They were immense in South Africa. It was the same story in Australia. New Zealanders will know today that the invasion has begun. And a huge crowd gathered outside the team hotel in Rotorua about an hour ago to wish the side well. If you're nervous at home, just think what the players must be going through. Today's game can set the tone for the tour ahead. So here we go then. Over the next six weeks, it's probably best to sleep in your lion shirt. It's one less thing to think about when the alarm goes off. In just over half an hour, the Lions will run out in front of a full house in Rotorua and make their first impression in a land where rugby is religion. I'm joined this morning by three men who I know are itching for this tour to get cracking. Former All Black captain Sean Fitzpatrick, Dowie Morris, who played in all three tests the last time the Lions toured New Zealand, and Scott Cornell with two Lions tour under his belt. And Scott, we all know how important it is to make a good first impression. It's vital. They're over in New Zealand. They've been there for a week now. And uh, this game now is upon them. And it's uh, fantastic. It's what they've wanted. All the training they've done for the last couple of weeks, they can put that disappointment of Argentina against them a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. They can get their teeth stuck into it now. And it's what they're there for. The games can begin. Need I ask, how are you fairly excited? Very excited. I think everybody watching at home is. is and uh, you can just see those shots there. And I mean, as an ex lion your shirt has been given to you, the wait is over, the debacle in Cardiff is forgotten, and now the tour has begun, so it's as simple as that, mate. Sean, you were captain 12 years ago when Dowie and friends <laughs> arrived down in New Zealand. It's <laughs> then, a nice the game's <laughs> turned professional. I mean, what's the hype been like in already rugby mad nation? Oh, it's huge. I, there's Dowie. I see just sort of shots there for the, the team walking out of the hotel. The whole country's come to a standstill, basically. Um, <laughs> basically, that's, that's, that's yeah. the reality. It's, it's huge, and I just can't wait. And... Uh, the pain of Bay of Plenty, which is uh, you know, the heartland of New Zealand rugby, really. So it's a great place to start. Well, the Lions arrived at the ground a short while ago. World Cup finalists, Grand Slam winners, players that have reached the peaks of the sport. But how are they going to be feeling right now, Scott? Oh, nervous anticipation. Uh, the, uh, there we said they've got their jersey. It's what they've dreamt about for. Some of these guys have never worn that uh, jersey before. So they'll be coming in Gavin there, you know. Uh, he's had his hair to match the jersey, which is <laughs> magnificent. So if he feels good, he'll go out there and he'll have a great game today. But these guys, they just want to get into it. This is what it's all about, is getting in there. They'll be very, very nervous now with half an hour to go. They just want to get on that field and show what they can do. Does it feel different pulling on a lion shirt? Yeah, I think it's... It, was it the greatest achievement I ever done? Probably. I mean, it's just an amazing um, feeling. And, I'm, you know, all the great legends of Lions have taught, the Willie John McBrides have said it, you know, you're the best at that time in the four countries, pulling that shirt on. You go out and play for yourself, for your family, for your friends. Everybody's gone to New Zealand, anybody who's gone to South Africa and Australia. It's just an amazing tradition and one that should be going on. And, you know, those players today have got a great responsibility. They know that. They've got to play well, and that's the, that's the key thing to start this tour off, because John Dawes said, there is no easy game in New Zealand. Uh, Bay of Plenty as well, Australia <laughs> and Fiji, past scouts for them. I mean, are the rest of the nation, all, all of New Zealand looking forward to this them upsetting the spirit of the Lions? <laughs> the well, they, they are. This is, this is the biggest game of their lives. They're playing against the British Lions, and, and they 
people will remember this for the rest of their lives. Win or lose, they're out there today. And, and I just know what it's like. I can appreciate how the Lions are feeling in terms of having to go to the Rotorua International Stadium <laughs> yeah. in Rotorua <laughs> and, and play against the BOP. The BOP. <laughs> horry, horry BOP. And, and they will just be, they will throw the kitchen sink at them. Well, there was a mass brawl, wasn't there, in 1983, <laughs> expecting them to come out and be physical? Well, they'll, they'll be very physical. During the week when they used to train and playing against Auckland, they would have our names on the tackle bags. And, and I'm sure this week they would have had Lawrence Delalio, those names on the tackle bag, because they want, they, want you know, they want to take chunks out of them, basically. Well, Brian O'Driscoll today becomes the first Irishman to captain a Lions tour since Kieran Fitzgerald in 1983. A proud moment for him. He's talking to Alex Payne. Well, Brian, it's been a long time coming, but tonight you lead the Lions for the very first time. How are you feeling right now? Excited. Um, just a great sense of anticipation. Having that changing room as well pump, pumped up for the game. Uh, I'm just thoroughly looking forward to kick off at 10 past 7 here. Um, it's been a long wait for some guys. Uh, I haven't played a game in, in four weeks, so I'm chomping at the bit. And uh, I know there's a number of other guys in that room who are, are of uh, a, a likewise mind. Is tonight all about getting the victory, or have you got to string together a performance as well? I think we want to perform. Uh, I think it is about it's, it's important that we win, but uh, we we want to start playing some of the standard rugby that we have uh, we've been practicing. Um, it's gone well for us, so uh, we want to carry that through into the games, and uh, it starts tonight. It's been well documented that the Bay of Plenty are going to throw everything at you. How crucial are those first 20 minutes going to be? Yeah, I think it's important we start well, um, <coughs> make sure we get some good go forward. Uh, but you know we're going to throw everything at them as well. So you know, there's been a lot of talk about but what they're going to do to us. I think um, we've got to think about our own game and, uh, and not worry about them so much. And, and hopefully it'll click together and, um, and produce a performance that you know, I think is, is in this side. We hope it goes well for you. Thanks for talking to us, Brian. Good Thanks. luck. Well, we would held, held him back for the Argentina game. Do you expect him to uh, lead by example out there this evening? Oh, I certainly do. He goes every time he goes and puts any jersey on, he plays with 110% commitment. You know, and these guys today, they know that when they put that jersey on, they're in, uh, they're in uh, an environment where if they don't play well, they can get turned over. So they need to go out there. They need to front up. The forwards need to front up. If they go there and they take it in, it's interesting for me today with Stevens, Bullock, and Jenkins. If they have a good game and they lead that forward, especially scrum time, then we can have the back. The backs, when you have a look at Lucy, O'Driscoll, Henson, Shanklin, Cueto, they're very, very exciting. But if they don't get that ball, it could be a long afternoon for them. I think it was Ian McGeekin who said in 1997 he selected Martin Johnson as mm -hmm. captain because he wanted someone enormous to knock on the opponent's changing room <laughs> door. I mean, it's not going to be the case with Brian O'Driscoll. How do you feel they'll differ as captains? <sighs> Difficult to say, but I mean, you pick a captain that is a shoe in for the test side, and Martin Johnson was, and Brian O'Driscoll is. You know, just on his form, um, different types of leaders. You know, Johnson leading the forwards, but you've got Delalia there. I think that's why Lawrence Delalia is on this tour. He will his experience is, is huge. So, Brian O'Driscoll, yes, on paper he is the captain, but it is so much goes on in that forward pack. The likes of Delalia, the likes of Hill, the likes of Martin Williams, crucial in that in that thing. But again, he is a leader and a fantastic player. But they've got to play rugby today. They've got to play. They can't just go there and defend. You know, we saw what happened against Argentina. We saw the All Black trial yesterday. You kick badly to them, they're going to run back, even the side of the Bay of Plenty. So it's, it's all about how they're going to go out and focus on this game. Again, on the subject of O'Driscoll, though, a man widely respected by the New Zealand he, public? Hugely. He's, uh, in terms of captains, he, he's, he's ideal. Yeah. I, I love what he said there. Mm. And that's what you need, that, that attitude. We're going to throw the kitchen sink at them. Yeah. You know, everyone's been talking about Bay of Plenty and New Zealand rugby. Absolutely. Fantastic to hear Brian O'Driscoll saying, we're going to go out, we're going to take the game to them. That's what they're going to do. They give the Bay of Plenty any glimpse of hope. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be hard. Yeah. They're going <laughs> <gonna, they're> <laughs> to check it at them. OK, well, the Lions touched down over a week ago, and Alex Payne has been with them every step of the way. The Lions of 2005 have yet to lace up their boots in anger, but already they've lost two of their pride. On Thursday night, Malcolm O'Kelly followed Ian Bullshaw out of the tour due to the reoccurrence of a groin injury. Simon Shaw is his replacement. And after a disappointing tour in 2001 for O'Kelly, it seems the luck of the Irish has not shone on his Lions career. I think we have to remember that, you know, Malcolm was on the last Lions tour for Australia and by his own admission he didn't quit himself well on that tour. and. Uh, came off it very disappointed and, and he learned a lot from that. Um, I think to his credit, you know, he's, he's built his game over the last four years and I know four years of hard work uh, with Ireland has culminated and been on this Lions tour and I think 
he would have really pushed hard for a test place and now that's been snatched away from by cruelly by an injury and uh, your heart has to go to him because you know um, it would be hard to imagine another opportunity for a Lions tour coming his way again. Well, despite O'Kelly's injury, the hype surrounding the Lions has been building all week in New Zealand. On Sunday, over 700 people turned up to see Sir Clive Woodward and his men arrive at Rotorua Airport for their official welcome to the country. Though for some of the tourists, it was a little hard to work out just exactly where that welcome was, as the Lions had to face up to a traditional Maori challenge. But both tour manager Bill Beaumont and captain Brian O'Driscoll managed to hold their nerve and pass the test, before the whole squad, led by Matt Stevens, replied with a song of their own, though it offered a little less oomph than their hosts. Well, the 700 interested spectators on Sunday were somewhat overshadowed by the 5,000 people who turned up to watch the Lions going through their moves at North Harbour Stadium on Tuesday. Though there was little given away to the All Blacks, it provided an opportunity for fans to see their heroes in training and gather some valuable mementos. Then on Tuesday evening, the 43rd member of the Lions squad joined up with his teammates after Stephen Jones' season with French side Clement Averne finally came to an end. And despite the journey, it was obvious that Jones was eager to catch up on lost time. Obviously, you know, my thoughts were here with the, with the Lions, especially uh, you know, when uh, they met up for the Argentinian game. Uh, but um, I had a job to do in France and uh, you know, the club uh, said I had to stay there, which is fair enough, and uh, now I'm delighted to be out here. But from Wednesday, it was the match against the Bay of Plenty which became the main focus. The 22 named for the first game in New Zealand were put through their paces during the morning session. And with the tour now well underway, and after all the meticulous planning, it seems that things are beginning to come together. You know, it's, it's a rugby-mad country, so it's good to be here. There has been a lot of planning and preparation, and um, just got to get on with it. I just want to get this first game played now, because you do need a couple of games to just get the whole organisation sorted out. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to it now. I've heard all week about what it means to New Zealand players to play against the Lions, because obviously they only see us once every 12 years, and how motivating it is for that. Well, I'll tell you what, when you put a line upon your chest and pull on a red jersey, it's pretty empowering itself. OK, before we go any further, let's take you through the details for the next six weeks. Six games will be played against first division NPC sides, plus Manawa 2, who are currently in the second division. Next Saturday, though, is a huge encounter for the Lions in what is generally regarded as the fourth test match against the New Zealand Maori in Hamilton. The first test in Christchurch is three weeks today, the second in Wellington on the 2nd of July, and the final test is in Auckland on the 9th. Right, let's get up to date then with the very latest from the stadium and join Stuart Barnes. He's pitch sided Rotorua with Alex Payne. A very good morning to you, Simon, and a very warm welcome from Rotorua. It's fair to say that New Zealand has gone lions crazy over the last few weeks. They've been followed everywhere by journalists and television crews. And Stuart, here we are. It's very, very exciting. They've been very warmly received wherever they've gone, but what kind of a reception do you think they're going to get out there on well, the field tonight? Well, Al, because the Lions have been at the centre of every headline in New Zealand for the last week, for the first time in these players' careers, the Bay of Plenty boys are at the maelstrom, right at the centre of world rugby, and I think tonight they're going to be bigger, stronger and faster. They're going to feel that way than ever before, but I've watched both teams train this week, and I've got to say... The Lions look so much stronger and fitter and so much more organised on Tuesday than Bay of Plenty Wednesday. I think as long as the Lions don't turn over ball early behind the gain line and allow Bay of Plenty into it, they've got the organisation and the systems to win this game well. It's been two weeks since that game against Argentina, but how much more are we going to be able to gauge from this team out here tonight? Well, I think we'll gauge a lot more. I think after the Argentina game, a lot of people rather unfairly were looking at individuals and said who played well or in greater case, who didn't play well. I think the problem there was one of coaching. Uh, the system looked too English. The Lions coaches have said we didn't have long enough together. They've had an extra week and a half or so since then. I know, I've talked to a lot of the coaches, they're far more confident that the systems are in place. And when you look at the talent in this team they pick, if everything is in shape, they should win this well. Well, Ben Kay said in the media earlier this week that every game was a trial for the Lions. One poor performance, he thought, 
and you were straight to the back of the queue for that test jumper. And with that in mind, who's going to have to have an extra special game out there tonight? Well, we in the media think that Mark Cueto has gone from being out of the squad to the test right wing. But bearing in mind, Clive Woodward didn't rate him in Argentina with England. He didn't pick him for this tour initially. I think Cueto has got a lot to prove. And the other guy is Ronan O'Gara. When you got 45 guys on tour, 45 people on tour, and you got five, uh, four outside halves, you cannot afford to make errors. You've got Wilkinson coming back to form. You've got Charlie Hodgson playing really well for sale in the Challenge Cup final. And, of course, Stephen Jones has been magnificent all season. If O'Gara is a little bit deep, doesn't play well today, it could be a long tour for him. Well, it's been a quite beautiful day here in Rotorua. Hundreds of fans mingling in the town during the afternoon. This one is going to be a very, very, very special way to get the tour started. Certainly is. Thanks, guys. Well, Rotorua is one of the most famous areas in New Zealand. It always attracts the tourists, and right now, most of them are wearing red shirts, and there's plenty for them to see. So that's what Rotorua has to offer, but what about Bay of Plenty? Here are a few players that the Lions will need to be wary of. Now, Senio scampers away. Nice flat pass to Sinovini. Senio almost through. So plenty of Super 12 players in this Bay of Plenty squad. For you though, who are the key men? Well, I think they've stuck up pretty well there. Yeah. I think you know, Wayne Ormond, uh, Player of the Year, um, a couple of years ago in New Zealand. Uh, outstanding leader. And he's the kind of guy that, that they build their team around. Um, quite, quite superb. Kevin Senior, the halfback, mm -hmm. is another one. Uh, Adrian Cashmore, which, which we didn't mention. Uh, the fullback has played for New Zealand, played for the All Blacks, um, has been up in Japan for the last three or four years and has come back this year, played in the Super 12 and did very well. What about these warm-up games? How much of a hand will Graham Henry have had in them? Will he have had a say to some of the coaches, target certain players, I want you to play in this sort of way? Yeah, I th Vern Cotter, is a, 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 he was the coach of the year last year mm. and he helped the Crusaders, he was the assistant coach of the Crusaders. Um, I'm sure he's spoken to Graham, but in terms of Graham influ influencing the, the way they're going to play the game, no, I, I don't think so. OK, well, it's a vitally important match for the players. The same can be said for the coach. Points to prove for Sir Clive Woodward, who played in his fixture 22 years ago for the Lions. He's talking to Alex. Well, Clive, after all the hype, it's finally time to get this Lions tour going. How are the guys feeling tonight? I think they're feeling fantastic. It's just, um, just excited. It has been a long time coming. Um, I'm very, very happy with the preparation, happy with the team. And um, you know, to see the guys get the shirts tonight, Gareth Jenkins presented the shirts, which was fantastic for him. Um, just the young faces, but even Brian O'Driscoll, you know, coming up last to get his shirt, his captain's side. It's a big, big thing to these players, but you know, my job is to try and keep their feet firmly on the ground. We've got to come here tonight, got to win this game and move on. So, uh, you know, it's a tough first game for us. So, a lot of hype around, but we've got to go out there, put it all out of our heads and just, um, you know, do what they're here to do. They're very good players and we've now got to really, you know, step up to the mark against a very good uh, provincial team. Realistically, can you afford anything other than the victory tonight? I don't really think about that. You know, we just got to play the game. Obviously, you go into any game of rugby, any any sport, because you just want it to win. So it's um, 
you know, if we come off winners, it's very easy to move forward. It doesn't matter how you play, as long as you come off with, with more points than the opposition. If you've won the game, and you can move on. So it's, a, it's an important game, obviously. It's, it's a tour. And I just believe, uh, you know, to be successful at the end of the trip, we've got to get some momentum going. And it, it kind of starts tonight. It was um, disappointing down in Wales and Argentina, but that was a real kind of phony war. This, this is the real thing. We're in New Zealand. We've had a fantastic welcome here. Everyone's been, you know, almost too nice in a way. So we know it's going to change tonight once, once, once the game starts. So, uh, so no, you know, the guys know it's about, you know, Driscoll, Delalia, the senior players. We we've, we've need, need to win this game and get off to a winning start. And uh, just really looking forward to it. And uh, just can't wait, really. Where do you expect to see some real improvements from that game that you mentioned against Argentina and Cardiff? I think everywhere. I mean, it was a disappointing game. We managed to get away with the draw, but it, it was a difficult game for the whole team to play, the whole team to coach, because we only had a couple of sessions, and I think the, the guys were so keen to entertain the Welsh crowd, and you know, the Welsh crowd were fantastic. They, they got behind the team, and uh, just a disappointing game. You know, we've had a lot more time to prepare this time, so you know, I'm just hoping to see us hang on to the ball. We, we kind of just played into the Argentinian strength. If we can just win our set pieces, you know, line out scrum, and just just keep all the ball a little bit more and um, just take the game to this bare, bare plenty team. And, you know, from the defensive point of view, we just really want to move move up a notch. You know, we're pretty sloppy on defense against Argentina. So, you know, I just think, you know, we just got to get improvement on every game. So the Argentina was uh, a game to cut our teeth on. We kind of started pretty low. And I'm just really hoping for a massive uh, improvement all around tonight. Both Woodward and Delalio as well this week saying it's all about momentum, getting things right in the lead up to the test. But how much of their hand can they reveal, do you feel, before Christchurch? I think they just need to go out and do the basics well. If they go out and do the basics, then they should take care of itself. You know, Clive talked about entertaining the crowd there. You don't really need to entertain the crowd. If you win, you entertain the crowd. Mm. You know, then the crowd go away happy and they go away content that, right, we've had a win under our belt, now we can move on. They need to go out there today, they need to scrum well, line out well, hit trucks and malls, and if they do that, then they'll go on and win the game. So, priority number one, then, not victory performance for you? Yes, it is, because you've got to build on something. Yes, they've got to win. They, you know, it's as simple as that. If they lose, that's my word. The New Zealand public will have a field day among the Lions. I can't see that happening. But I've got, you've got to see some structure. You've got to see how, they, how they're going to play. Yes, they're going to be tight. They, you know, these guys are international players. They are, they are fitter than the Bay of Plenty, well, but it's two the structure one, behind him, especially likes of Henson and O'Driscoll. I'm looking forward to that two combination. One, two, Obviously, O'Driscoll, we know all about him. Henson's had a very good season for Wales. That combination could be test match, but again, a lot hinges on it. Yeah, what about the back row as well, <laughs> Sean? Well, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see how Hill, Hill goes. Uh, Delalio is a huge influence. I've said right from the start, he's crucial to, to the success here. Um, as as Dowie said, um, O'Driscoll needs Delalio. And Delalio is a leader. He's been there before. He knows what to expect going to Bay of Plenty to the International Stadium. He's been in this environment before. And it's crucial, as the guys have said. They've got to do the basics well. Don't do what they did down in, um, in Cardiff. They've got to do the basics well. Scrum well. Fords are Fords. Backs are backs. We keep going back to it. <laughs> They've got to do that. So is it going to be a winning start then, do you feel, Scott? Yeah, I'm sure it is. They'll go out there. They want to prove a point this afternoon. And I think they'll go out and they win well. Dowie? Yeah. Dowie? yeah. Bookies are given back 25 points. If they do that, they'll, be done, they'll have done very well. And Sean? Well, I'd be happy with a 14-point win, actually. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a on it. <laughs> money on that. <laughs> Fair dues. So we're just about set then for the start of what is going to be a thrilling few weeks. And the pride of 2005 are moments away from pulling on the famous red jersey. selected on a Lions tour, that's the top of the tree, you, you can't get any higher in Britain, that is, you know, you're, you're certainly arrive when, when, you, when you actually play in a Lions side, and particularly play in a Test side, and uh, it's, it's, it's the greatest honour uh, uh, in rugby terms that I can ever imagine. Well, my first uh, tour, 74, of course, uh, I'd never really uh, met uh, any of these guys, I'd, played, I'd, played, I'd never played against people like Gareth Edwards, but you know, they were absolute superstars, they were heroes, they were my heroes. Uh, and to suddenly be selected and sat in the same room as these guys thinking, you, you know, you had to pinch yourself that you were, uh, uh, you're going to be in the same team. The supporters come together to support the one team. Uh, during uh, February and March, we'll travel to Edinburgh and Dublin and uh, London, Cardiff, uh, and we'll follow each other's teams. But the Lions come together in unison and they, not only the team, but the supporters sing as one nation. It's about teamwork. And when you go to the far side of the world, you have to have people standing together. Uh, and you have to have that word that we maybe don't hear a lot about today, loyalty.
Well, Lions fans know exactly what that word means. Everyone in red loyal to the cause. Four nations standing together. And if you haven't got tickets before you travel to New Zealand, don't bother. They are like gold dust. Just look at that. They have arrived. Get ready. Kickoff is next. The Lions tour continues on Wednesday morning with the second match. Our coverage of the game against Taranaki gets underway at the regular time of 7.30 on Sky Sports 1 for a 10 past 8 kickoff. Well, only one Lions squad has come away from New Zealand with a series win. That was in 1971 under John Dawes. 34 years is a long time to wait. And tonight, the 2005 Lions under O'Driscoll will try to lay down a marker to set the tone for the rest of what they hope will be a successful tour. Match commentary then comes from Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. And welcome back to Rotorua and the Lions supporters have been waiting four years for this moment ever since that final whistle went in Sydney in that third test against Australia. But New Zealand and the Bay of Plenty, Stuart, have been waiting 12 years for this. And rugby union has changed so much in the 12 years since the Lions taught here. The game has gone professional. The Northern Hemisphere has wrested the World Cup from the Deep South. But one thing that hasn't changed, and that is the magic associated with the Lions tour of New Zealand. Rotorua is buzzing. The whole country is buzzing.